Hello and welcome to Knittin' from the Mitten. My name is Tiffany and I'm coming to you from Midland, Michigan, which is also known as the Mitten State. You can find me on Ravelry and Periscope as Tiff Grooms Dogs, on Instagram as Knittin' from the Mitten, and we have a Ravelry group called Knittin' from the Mitten Podcast. Thank you so much for coming back if you are a returning viewer, and thank you for checking me out if this is your first time. I hope you enjoy the podcast. I have quite a few whips this week that I have been working on, and I actually missed a week, so I should have quite a bit of progress to show, although not as much as I would have liked, but I'll explain why later. So these are my Tulsi socks, and that, the pattern is by Verena from the Wool Club, and let me get situated here. And this is what I got done this week. You can see from my little marker here. So I got quite a bit, quite a bit done. I'm on the heel, or the gusset, and um, so I'm adding in my stitches. And you can see how pretty this pattern is. I just love working on this. So pretty. And it's so easy. It's really, really easy to follow. Um, it's just a couple row pattern repeat and it's once you get going on it you really know where you're supposed to be and um, and I think it's very intuitive so I'm very very much enjoying that and the yarn that I'm using is um, Cascade Heritage and is the iris mix color so those are my Tulsi socks and the other thing that I'm working on is my baby sweater for my nephew that's on the way and this is in um, the bag that I made. I actually made this last week. You know, I got a little end here, but I really, really like this fabric and this polka dot fabric down here. I really, really like this. I um, went a little bit fast on it, so there's a few mess ups on it that I wasn't too happy about. And I don't know if I'm going to go back and fix them because they're just kind of minor, but I should know better than to go so fast when I when I work on it, but I've got quite a few stitch markers on here to keep track, but um, this is what I've got done on it. So it's just, it's from the top down, and it's done in a raglan style, and there's these little garter panels on the side, and this is just, oh, it's so cute. I love that little bit of texture that it's got, but this knit is so nice and easygoing, and um, it's worsted weight. This is just some acrylic stash that I've got. And um, the needles are, I believe these are size 6. Nope, 8. So 5 millimeter. And I believe that uh, you cast it on and do up to the um, ribbing in a 6, I believe. And then you switch to the 8s. But doing the rest of the sweater in the 8 is making it go so fast. Which is so fun and, you know, it makes it enjoyable to you know, to get further, um, and so qu so quickly. So I'm really, really enjoying this knit. Um, this is a free pattern. I'm sure you, most of you have heard of it, but if you haven't, it's called Flax, and it's by Tin Can Knits. They have, this is the zero to six month size, and they go, um, all the way up to adult sizes. I'm not sure how big it goes, but I know it goes into adult, and it's just so fun. I really would like to make, um, myself a sweater, um, from this pattern. I just think it's, perfect fall sweater and even winter but I just love it so really been enjoying that I put um also I put stitch markers because you have stitch markers for where your decreases are and then um, or your increases I'm sorry your increases and then I have these two little sheep stitch markers showing me where I do my garter panel because since it's not uh, since it's um you know done in the round you have to actually do the pearls you know for garter not just knit it so um, it's a very, very easy pattern, I think, and I have, um, I was told before that this sweater pattern is very good for someone who's doing their first sweater because, um, the pattern really, really walks you through it nicely, has things highlighted that take you to the key if you don't know how to do something, and, um, they also show you how the, um, how the pattern is or how the sweater is formed as you go and so you kind of know what you're looking at so I, I don't know I really really enjoy this pattern I would really strongly recommend it to somebody who's maybe 
um, wanting to knit their first sweater. I think this would be a really, really good first sweater, first sweater knit. Um, something else that I have been working on this week is my Madewell, which I haven't worked on this a ton in the last two weeks. Um, I've been really trying to work on that little baby sweater because I got to get that done. So, because the baby's on the way. And um, he's due in the end of September. Um, but here's what I've got done on my Madewell. And this is by um, Hohi Locatelli. So just a couple rows. But I got new needles for this. So I'm very, very happy. Um, they're high, high sharps. And I ordered them from Claire of the Woolly Thistle. And you may know Claire from the audio podcast, New Hampshire Knits. And if you have not listened to her podcast, you definitely should. She has her chickens on there, and it's really just soothing. And I like I love listening to, to Claire's podcast. Um, when I was at school last semester, I used to listen to her, so I was there and work on my homework. And um, she's got such a cool accent. She's originally from Scotland, but she's been living in the States for a while. So it's a really, really, really cool to listen to her talk. So, But she, um, I can't say enough good things about her shop that she opened they specialize in um, UK yarns and so she brings them here to us so that it's easier for us to access them without having to pay for customs or um, you know the international shipping rates so she's got West Yorkshire spinners John Arbin um, Eden Cottage yarns I believe and uh, just quite a quite a few and um, this is I got the high high sharps from her and um, I ordered them one, I think it was, I don't remember what day of the week it was, but I'd ordered them in the afternoon. I got um, an email notification like an hour later saying that the label was created and it was all ready to get shipped. And I was just so impressed by that. And then I think I received it two days later. It was so fast and I was so impressed by that. So you should definitely go order from Claire because she has amazing customer service. And how cool is it to be able to have access um, you know, to those UK yarns right here in the States. So, love, love Claire. And, oh, my God, I want to show if I can find it. Oh, I don't know where I put it. I got a little, um, oh, here it is. I got a little button from her, and it says New Hampshire Knits on it. And um, she said that these were, this was the last of the buttons. I think she had one other one that she was going to keep. And so... That's very precious to me, so I'm gonna put that on one of my um, one of my bags. But I just thought that was so sweet. Um, but as far as the uh, Madewell cardigan goes, I'm really really enjoying the knit. I'm not quite to where I have to um, um, section off for the arms for the sleeves, um, but I'm getting there. Like I said, I've been kind of more focusing on um, my Tulsi socks and my um, my cozy memories blanket and. Um, that baby sweater because that's like I said that's a priority knit so but I'm itching to get to work on my Madewell like monogamously I love love it so that's another one if you have been itching to get um, to knit a cardigan I strongly recommend it um let's see oh my on the spice market shawl got a little bit of love once again not a ton just a little bit and I'm in the middle of a row on this one Here's how far I am here. And I don't even remember if I moved the um, stitch marker from last time, so I really may have only done like two rows on this. <laughs> but um, I love this knit. I love how the colors are working up in this gradient. The gradient that I'm using is Miss Babs in the Dark Perse or it's the Perseus gradient set. And I just think it's so beautiful. Um, I've said before that in the pack it doesn't look like it's a very um, like obvious gradient. It looks like it's very, very, um, I don't know what you would say, but it doesn't look like it's very like obvious. And I think with in, um, in the shawl it looks so much brighter and you look like you see more of an obvious shift in color. And with the, I think with having the gray in between. So I'm really, really happy with this. I can't wait to wear this. I think this is going to be so pretty in the winter. And I'm just, I'm really kind of looking forward to having that for maybe around Christmas time. That'll be really pretty. And the gray that I'm using is, um, what's this one? It's Cascade Heritage Solids. 
and I think it's just called gray I don't remember um, specifically I know it's on my uh, pattern page on my Ravelry group or on my Ravelry page <laughs> um, so let's see and then I figure um, oh and that's my Melanie Berg I don't know if I said that but I figure I might as well talk about the knit along here because this is where um, or because that's the project that I'm doing for our knit along primarily And um, I know last time I said I was doing the Tulsi socks and the Madewell as part of that, but I actually cast on the Tulsi socks before July 1st, which I didn't realize. So I, those will not be included in the knit along, but um, the Madewell and the shawl will be. And so if you're just tuning in for the first time, the knit along um, that we've got going on is being co-hosted with Catherine of Lou Cookie Knits podcast. And what it is, is you pick a pattern and a yarn that are from two different countries and you, so it can be, um, like mine is the pattern is from Germany and the yarn is from America. It doesn't have to be from your country. It can be from any two different countries. It doesn't have to be from two different continents even. Um, it can be where, wherever you choose, as long as it's just not the same. And um, we also ask that nothing that's been cast on before July 1st be entered. But um, in my group, we already have... 21 finished objects so I, I checked that this morning and I thought that was just fantastic and um, we also have quite a few prizes and if you go back and watch previous episodes you can see what prizes that we've got and um, yeah I'm really enjoying this knit along I think it's a really cool concept um, Catherine came up with the idea and I just think it's really really neat and um, you should also go check out her podcast if you have not um, I saw on her Instagram that she's um, starting to dye yarn as well and she has just come up with some such pretty colors and I was just so impressed and I'm really really excited to see those. So um, yeah that's pretty much it for the knit along though as far as news with that. Um, if you have any questions about it feel free to message me on Ravelry or Instagram and um, yeah I'm that goes until September 30th as well. So, um, other than that, I've been working on my Cozy Memories blanket. And I'm still not caught up to where I need to be, but I did still get some done. I also wove in all my ends, which I can't remember. I may have said that on the last one. Now I don't remember. But if I did put it on my Instagram, so... I don't know if I did have it with all my ends woven last time or not. I really can't remember, but here's where it's at so far. And I'll show you the new one. So this is the one I'm working on currently. It's kind of like a gray sparkly color. I don't know um, what yarn this is. I'm, um, I'm in contact with Linda, so she's going to let me know which one that is. And let's see, I did this one this pink one. This is the Plucky Knitter and it's called um, Cherries on the Mall. And then I did this one which is Desert Vista Dye Works in the Come On Get Happy colorway from Partridge Family. So I thought that was really cool. And I've never used Desert Vista Dye Works so I was really really excited to see that because um, I, I follow them on Instagram and I've you know seen all their yarns before but I've never used it and so I was really happy to to try that out but I'm really loving this as always um, there is still a blanket blitz knit along going on in um, the knitting expat group and the Saxetra group and I believe it goes till the end of August it may be longer but I've been involved in that I've been posting in that um, but I know a lot of people are kind of getting their blankets out now that it's getting a little bit closer to fall so that's that's fun to see but uh I can't wait for this to get bigger and just be snuggled up with this in the winter with my cocoa and watching White Christmas and I'm just, oh, I'm excited for that. And hopefully it'll be twice as big by then. I think I might need to put it into a new bag now. Just with all my stuff, this is my little Fox in the Hound bag that I um, got from a swap. And uh, I've got some yarn tucked in here so that's probably why I'm running out of room. but. I think I'm going to probably move it to a bigger bag now and keep all my goodies in there with it. That's kind of exciting. It's growing so much that it needs a it needs a new a new home. 
so um let's see that is all I've got then as far as my my whips and I am going to um, pause and then I will be right back with some acquisitions so for acquisitions this week I am really excited to show you my Harry Potter yarn club that I got um, from Molly of a homespun house I got that in the mail this week and or I got it last week I guess and um, I adore it. She said that she posted it on her Instagram, so she said that everybody should have received it by now. So if you have not received it, you might want to look away or fast forward, but um, she's pretty sure that everybody has gotten it by now. So here's what it looks like, and it is so pretty. This is um, on her soft sock fingering, and it's called Dobby Tries to Help. <laughs> I just thought that was so cute. I just love, love, love how this looks and I can't wait to make socks out of this. I just think it's beautiful. And then the charm that came with it is a little cake and it looks just like the cake in Harry Potter that um, Dobby, that Dobby brings down. So I just thought that was so cute. So I love that. So I was very, very excited um, to receive that, and there's still two more installments left of that, so I'm looking forward to that big time. Um, the other thing that I received this week, it was part of a swap. It was like just like a little mini swap um, that we did in um, Antonella's group of Diary of Yarnaholic podcast, and um, because she is hosting what's called uh, Operation Whip Control, where you don't cast on anything um, for the month of August. And um, we so we signed up for this little swap where we would send each other a card in a little mini skein and um, just kind of let each other know that we're thinking of each other and to help, you know, not to resist the urge to cast anything else on. So I received um, my package and, oh my gosh, I was spoiled. So spoiled. Uh, my partner was Rhonda, who is Birdie Butterfly on uh, Ravelry and Instagram. And so one of the things she sent me was this little tea. This looks yummy. And this is the card that I got, which I adore. And this is actually from um, Tolt Yarn and Wool. And I believe that's in Washington. I should know this. I really should know this. I think it's in Washington. I don't know if it says on here. I think so. Okay. I know that Sarah from Dabbling Shepherdess is probably shouting at me right now because she was just there. <laughs> um, and this is the stitch marker that she sent me, which I adore. This little bee. Oh, it's so cute. How adorable is that? And she makes these, but she doesn't have an Etsy shop. <laughs> I'm just like, you've got to do that. But she just does it for swaps, and I think that is so cool. And then here are the little minis that she sent me. And this is Miss Babs. And also how awesome is her handwriting? Oh my gosh. I love her handwriting. I want to write like that. I don't know how she does it. It's amazing. Um, this is another Miss Babs mini. So pretty. And then this, I just realized, I thought this was a Miss Babs as well. This is Miss Mothballs, and I've always wanted to try Miss Mothballs. <sighs> She's out of Germany. So, oh, I thought that was so cool. So, thank you so much, Rhonda. That was just brightened my brightened my day when I got that. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, let's see. So, that is it for my um, stuff that I received this week. Now... The next thing that I want to show you is, I actually just did this today. Um, I have a friend of the family that knows a lady that is no longer, um, she's no longer knitting, she's no longer able to. So she had um, quite a bit of yarn and needles and books and things um, that needed to go to a good home. So I got to go through and oh my gosh, it was like Christmas. I got so many cool things. So I want to share that with you guys. So let's see, where should I even begin? Let's start with this bag. This is, I got about four skeins of this. This is a nature spun and this is worsted weight. And I've made um, 
my uh, bobble hat, I use Nature Spun. And it worked out really, really well. So I don't know what I'm going to use this for yet, but I just thought this was so pretty. I think I've even got enough for a sweater. So let's see, maybe, maybe a cardigan. But um, I got this really cute Martha Stewart bag used for projects. <laughs> I thought that was cute. Might put my cozy memories in that one. It's a good size for it. Um, I got quite a bit of um, Lamb's Pride worsted. I got a sweater's quantity of this gray, which I thought was so pretty. And this is wool and mohair. So I'm hoping it's not, I don't think it's going to be too itchy. It feels lovely and it's a single. But I just think this is so cool. So I'm gonna be I'm gonna be busy on Ravelry looking up uh, different patterns, and then there's this Lamb's Pride bulky, which is um, I think it's called Peacock, which I thought was beautiful. Oh, I just love that, love it. Um, and then this, I was so excited about. She had the mother load of needles. Check all these out. Oh my goodness. This I was just saying about how I wanted to switch out my set of wooden needles for metal needles and I've got everything so I need to go through and see exactly which ones they are but she's got doubles of things and oh my gosh and I've never used Addies before so I'm very excited to try those out and I've heard nothing but good things about them um, I've got a few of these I won't show every everything because there's so much but um, this is like some some DK yarn I thought that was cute. I've only got one skein of each of these, and they're kind of different bright colors, so I'm not sure what I will make. But I just thought this would be really nice to have, especially with, um, you know, the new baby coming along. I thought this would be fun. Um, this is beautiful. This is Mini Mochi, and this is a single... And, um, I believe it's a fingering weight, but I obviously wouldn't want to do socks with it. Um, it looks to me like it's bigger, but on the tag it says, um, you can use one to two U.S. needles. So, but they're little 50 gram balls. Um, obviously I wouldn't make socks with them because they are a single ply, but figured I could do like a shawl, you know, part of a shawl with it. You know, pair it with a salad. I just thought that would be so pretty. And then there's another one, this color, which I thought was beautiful as well. And they're just so soft, so incredibly soft. Um, this is, there's quite a bit of this. This is Barocco, um vintage wool, it says. And I believe this is acrylic and wool. Yes, acrylic wool and nylon. So I thought that was a really pretty color. Um, not quite sure what I'll make with this, but like I said, that's what, Ravel what Ravelry is for. So I thought these were cute. These are just little 25 gram balls. Um, and they are merino superwash wool, uh, polyamide, and viscose. So there's this little pink and blue. I figure I can use these as... Um, Heels, cuffs, and toes, even for minis. But they're just little baby blue and maybe even little baby booties. So, I just thought those were cute. Um, there's some cotton. I can't tell if that's upside down or not. Nope. Okay. And this. I have no idea what I'm going to make with this. There's only a couple of these. Um, but this is merino, acrylic, and nylon. And these are little 50 gram hanks. But they're so soft. And I don't know. It says a US 4 to 6. 3.5 to 4 millimeters. So I'm not quite sure what I would even make with this. But I just thought it was a gorgeous color. So I grabbed that. <laughs> but there's a couple scenes of that in here. And... This, I thought would be so much fun. She had some lopey 
in this yellow as well, which remind me of Gryffindor colors. I thought that was cool. But I love this red. I adore that. And, um, yeah, I don't know what I'll make with this either, but I'm going to look all this up and get some fun ideas. But, yeah. So, um, oh, and then I've got some books. That's pretty much it for the yarn. I think there might be some other odds and ends in there. Um, but I found this book, which I thought was hilarious. The I Hate to Finish Sweaters Guide to Finishing Sweaters. So I am not good at finishing. I always have a hard time with it. So um, I'm really excited to look through that and see what's in there. There's this old copy of Mittens. Which I thought was cool. And um, this is a scanned in. But um, I thought that would be kind of fun. All the different cabled mittens. And this book called Knitting Over the Edge, um, which this is really cool. It's got so many different things in here, just different textures that you can do. Um, it's also got some intarsia and um, color work. Let's see, like some of this. And just really cool things like that. So I thought this would be a really good one to have, um, you know, for my library. And then there's this book, which is just a, a neat little sock book. Um, there's quite a bit of patterns in here, so I thought that would be really, really fun. But, um, yeah, so very, very thankful for that, that I got to go through there and um, pick that stuff out. So very, very lucky. And I'm very, very thankful for that. Um, so, um, next up, I will talk about some chit chat. Okay, so for chit chat this week, um, we went to the rodeo um, as part of the county fair, and that was so much fun. If you follow me on Instagram, you saw. Um, so I did some videos on like my Instagram stories, and um, it was so much fun. They are such an amazing group. It's one that um, travels all around Michigan, I believe. I think it's Michigan based. I'm not sure. It's called the Super Kicker Rodeo. And um, I was just so impressed by how well they treat their animals. And they have them all run out at the end and they all just kind of run around and can get to just cool down and do their thing. And um, it was just such, such a fun, fun time. Um, what was really cool was during the intermission, they had um, a guy from Carroll, Michigan, that is training um, a wild Mustang. The Mustang was wild two months ago, and he has um, 90 days to train him, and then he goes down to Texas to do the wild, uh, I think it's called the Mustang Makeover. And um, after the 30 days that they compete there, the, um, the horses go up for adoption, so people can adopt them, and they're on auction. And... Um, it's just such a cool, cool program. There's actually a documentary about it on um, Netflix. At least there used to be. I don't know if it's still up there anymore. Um, Extreme Mustang Makeover. That's what it's called. But um, that was so neat to see. He had that horse. He wanted to help desensitize it. And so he stood out um, in the middle and had us all screaming and yelling. And the horse just stood there. It was completely fine. And he even stood up and, like, had a whip, like, going around his head and, like, he would like hit the ground next to the horse with it and like have it like drape over the horse and around his feet and he didn't have any trouble with it and it was just it was so cool to see to see that so that was a lot of fun I got my elephant ear which was my happiness and uh, I get one of those a year so I was very happy to get that and um, yeah it was it was a lot of fun going to the fair I always loved that um, other than that um, I am going, I said this in my last podcast, but in October, October 22nd, which is a Saturday, I'm going um, to the Ann Arbor Fiber Expo with my mom. And um, I also found out that Stacey Elstone of the Stress Knits podcast, who is also a fellow Michigander, she will be there as well. So very excited to meet her and see her. So, and she also um, just started dyeing yarn. So if you've not checked out her podcast, go do it. Check her out. She's such a sweetie. And um, I'm, I'm really excited to meet her, so that'll be fun. And um, I also know that some of you guys are going to be there as well, so I'm very excited to meet all of you. So um, I don't know if there's going to be like an official meetup or anything, but, um, you know, if you see me, come say hi. I would love to see you guys. So 
Um, and other than that, um, the reason why I have been so busy these past couple weeks is because I have been working on setting up my Etsy shop, which I'm very, very excited about. This has um, been something that I've been wanting to do for quite a while now, um, about a year. And, um, but it was always kind of talked about in passing, oh, I kind of want to do that. And then every time I would talk about it, I, the more and more I wanted to do it. And um, my husband kind of gave me the courage to, he said, just do, let's just do it, you know. So um, he really, really helped me out with that. So, and I've got, um, I've got my card right here that will be on the, um, that will be on the yarn tags, or these will be the yarn tags. And there's a really cool story behind these tags. So the name of it um, is the Woolen Homestead. And um, this, this sheep on here is actually a sheep from the homestead over in um, Midland. And this is a sheep that my husband went out and um, one day while I was at work, he went out and... Uh, there we go. Now I got it focused. <laughs> he went out and took a picture of this sheep for me for for my logo. So I thought that was so sweet. But yeah, um, I wanted to explain. There is a little homestead out um, out in Midland here, and it's part of what's called the Chippewa Nature Center. And they have this really sweet log cabin. And inside, there's a spinning wheel. There's um, quilts, and it's set up, you know, like traditional like little house on the prairie it's so cute and um the day my husband went out they actually had it open for like a kids group to go through and so he got to go in and take pictures and um so i'll try and insert some pictures um so you can kind of see where the inspiration um for for my shop came from and they've got um, pigs out there and sheep and cows and it's it is amazing to go out there and it's just so comforting and it's out you know out in the country and relaxing and so cozy and um, I love going out and visiting there and that's the kind of place that my husband and I would like to own some days um, to have our own little homestead so that was kind of where the the inspiration behind the name came from and uh, I just love that the picture of the sheep is, is from here in Midland I love that so very excited about that um, and I don't know, I don't have anything listed yet. Um, I will show you what I will be listing, but I don't know if you can access the page or not, like if you wanted to follow it. Um, but I will give you the name, um, like the website anyways, it would be, um, uh, it would be thewoolenhomestead.etsy.com. So I'll show you this, the Woolen Homestead. So .etsy.com, and I'll put a little, um, link in the bottom. So I don't know if that will work or not yet, but um, I will make an announcement on Instagram in Ravelry um, when I will be posting. So um, if you're not following me on Instagram, go ahead and follow me so you can um, find out more about that. And so I will show you guys what I have been working on. Um, here is the first one I dyed. So this is kind of a really pretty like lilac-y, um, navy blue. It's got some golden tones in there. And I just love how this turned out. It really reminded me of like, at first it reminded me of like, especially these parts over here, like lavender. Um, but with the blue, it doesn't so much. So then it started to remind me of like, blueberry crumble cake. <laughs> so I'm not sure. I don't have these named yet, but that's kind of what I thought of. But um, I've also got this unskeined. I've got two skeins of this. So you can see all the different colors. And I think this would like just look so cool in a pair of blueberry waffle socks. I just love it. I think that's so neat. Um, and oh, it's got some like, plummy colors right there. Um, but these are all on... Um, a sock, their sock weight, and they are a super wash merino um, and nylon base. And the second one that I did, well, I'll show you this one first. This is kind of an autumny color. And this just, oh, this screams October and November to me. Like getting ready for Halloween and Thanksgiving. And I'll show you what this looks like unstained. 
And now this one has more greens in it. Um, so I'm probably going to list those separate because this one has quite a bit more green in it that I think it almost looks different. Um, so that way there's no confusion on what anybody is purchasing. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I'm going to go take some pictures today, hopefully um, outside so you can get a really good view of um, idea of what they look like. And then this one is my favorite. I I think I'm going to actually dye up one for me to keep because I love it. I think it's so fun. And this is so me. So that, excuse this little tie right here. That won't be on there. But um, So this has pinks and plums and blue. And oh my gosh. I just think this is so fun and so girly. And oh my gosh. I just want to make a pair of socks out of these right now. But operation whip control so no casting on for me and by the way side note I said um, in my last podcast that there were no prizes for that and there are I forgot um, and so if you go on to um, Diary of Yarnaholics podcast group you can see um, the prizes for that so side note but um, so here is what this looks like oh, I just love this I think this is just so much fun so yeah, I, I most likely will dye up this for myself. But yep, these will be for sale in my Etsy shop very, very soon. Like I said, I'm still just working out um, a few things. I have to, I have to set up my printer still. I just got a printer, so um, I have to do that and uh, get a few more shipping supplies. But then everything, I'm hoping within the week that they will be up. Um, but like I said. Um, Go and check out the Etsy shop, because um, if you follow it, you should be able to to find out, get notifications, and um, also, like I said, follow me on Instagram. And um, if you have any questions about it, please feel free to message me. And um, yeah, I believe that is it then for what I wanted to show you guys. Um, we're also hoping to have maybe like some um, little like wood burn buttons or. Um, even like antler buttons in the shop, anything that, you know, you would find in a homestead. <laughs> um, my husband may even be making some um, spindles, some drop spindles, so I'm very, very excited about that. Um, but I will let you know more about that uh, when that's available. So um, I don't know, I may even actually get in another podcast before I, I, um, before I put up the stuff, but like I said, you just have to see, um, subscribe to me if you have not, because then you can also find out through here, um, in case maybe I'll make a special little video about it as well. So, um, I will try and get out the word to you guys, you know, as soon as I know more about it, <laughs> as soon as I can do it. And, um, yeah, I guess that's all I've got for this week. So, um, happy knitting and I will see you guys next time. Bye.